like to call the meeting of the Laurel Island School Board to order. Please stand for a moment. Silence. Motion on the motion. All those in favor? Those opposed? Motion carries. Motion carries. This uh, meeting will be on YouTube. Just go to South Bean Township on YouTube and you'll be able to uh, see it. Thank you. At this time I'd like to recognize the, any Laurel Island stakeholders who would like to address the board on anything that's on the agenda. Thank you. This time we have a presentation by Cadet Samantha Costello to present the fall semester of PIP ROTC Cadet Corps Mission Briefing. Um, 
We have drill competitions, race across America. We have like middle ball and superintendent's review where we get all of our ribbons and medals and awards and stuff like that. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Costello. Question on the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, Dr. Uh, Wallace. Thank you, Mr. Sutton. <clears throat> this time, I would like to introduce our student board representatives for the 2019-2020 school year. I would like to follow an individual to stand. Mr. Brendan Coach. Ms. Hallie Green. matters that are important to the student body, not just at their grade level, but at all grade levels. In years past, the student representatives have really helped lighten and enlighten myself in ways that we can better the school district as a whole. If there are classes that they feel like they need to be improved upon, they tell me. If there are classes they feel like they need and we do not offer, they let me know. So they are a very vital link between myself and the board, and myself and the school community. And I thank them for donating their time to be our school board representatives this year. Thank you, I look forward to working with you. First up, we'd like to send out a great thanks for the generous donation from the Abundant Life Church in Uniontown we were given backpacks stuffed with high quality supplies for students in need. We will be delivering backpacks to each building and they will be made available for all referrals. Abundant Life is also working on filling purses with toiletries and feminine hygiene products, as well as shaving bags for boys with toiletries. Once these are available, we will make that information available to everybody. But thank you for Abundant Life Church, Abundant Life Church for helping our school district. This comes from Ms. Ashley Colasar, uh, one of our math teachers at the high school. She said, I had one of my most memorable experiences as an educator. I was honored to attend the Pennsylvania Governor's School for the Sciences Certification Banquet on behalf of my former 10th grade honors Algebra II student, Jordan O'Brien. Jordan was selected as one of 50 st 56 students chosen from 600 plus applicants to compete and complete a five-week program at Carnegie Mellon University. During that time, she took college courses, collaborated with students from all over the state, and completed and presented a medical research project. Congratulations to Jordan for that endeavor. <laughs> Next, we have one of our elementary teachers, Mr. Jeremy Winkler, reports that Zachary Mansbury, he has been helping him stay motivated in his writing process. And Mr. Mansbury finally published his own book, and that is an inspiration and it's impressive. And it's something that we want all of Ohio students to know that you can achieve if you truly put your mind to it. So congratulations to Mr. Zachary Mansbury on the publication of his book. Also at the middle school, we have our Pony Pantry up and running. The Pony Pantry at the middle school is underway. We are currently sending home two bags to two to five students weekly. At our highest point last year, we were sending home 11 bags weekly. We are hoping to reach more of our students in need this year in order to provide this service. We'd like to thank Ms. Christy Carpensi for overseeing that. And she made sure that if we have any students at the middle school who are in need, we are trying to take care of them, so thank you. <laughs> La 
later tonight in the agenda, we have two employees who have reached tenure. And one of the things that I do as superintendent is I reach out to them and I ask them to fill out a sheet that has two questions. The first question is describe why you became a teacher. And the second question is please elaborate on the most enjoyable aspect of working for the Laurel Highland School District. Later on this evening, we will be approving Ms. Michelle Jackson. And when I asked her to describe why she became a teacher, she says, quote, I became a teacher for many reasons. I believe the main reason I became a teacher was to make a difference in the lives of the students. Working with you and helping to develop their minds and abilities is so rewarding in so many different ways. Congratulations to Ms. Jackson, Jackson on her tenure later tonight. <laughs> Next, I have Master Sergeant Daniel Cervone one of our ROTC instructors. When I asked him to please describe why you became a teacher, quote, this is going to sound cliche, however, I became a teacher to try and make a difference in a student's life, even if it's just one student at a time, to make an unpopular student know that popularity isn't everything, to provide each student with the tools to succeed in every goal they set forth, to teach them that the only time we truly fail is when we give up to teach them to never give up and to always give a hundred percent. A hundred percent of the time and success, a hundred percent of the time and success will come. To show them that, the, that life is full of unexpected ups and downs. To teach them that if you want things to change, well, then you have to be the change that you want. These are just some of the reasons I became a teacher. Very well said, Master Sergeant Cervone. Congratulations on your I was sent by the Pennsylvania School Boards Association the honor roll of two board members completing eight years of service. I would like to congratulate first and foremost Ms. Jamie DeAndrea and yourself, Mr. Suffolk, for eight years of board service. You're recognized by the PSBA and by us for eight years as honor roll board service members. Thank you very much. Everybody give these folks another round of applause. Thank you, Dr. Wallace. That concludes my report. Academic Foundation report times. Community Spirit Day will be held prior to the homecoming football game on Friday, September 27, 2019, from 4.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. Events will be held in front of the high school. Admission is $1 per person for everyone. Tickets can be purchased at the administration office, at any of the schools, or from the foundation member. That ends my report. I think that this is tomorrow night. It's actually tomorrow, um, September 20th. Thank you, uh, Mrs. Kalich. Strategic Plan and Board Policy Committee. Uh, Yes, I'd like to move to board policy. I'd like to make a motion to approve the second reading and make it a part of the board policy for the E6 and Vapes policy, which is Exhibit A. Question on the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. That concludes my report. The curriculum committee, uh, Mrs. Andrew, would you like to do that also? Sure. Um, I'd like to make a motion for C81 award extra faculty positions for the postings, which is Exhibit B, including tutors for home round, instruction in the home, AC and SAT monitors, and bus monitors. Again, in the form of a motion. Question on the motion. Roll call, please. Who's the second? Second. Mrs. D'Andrea? Yes. Mrs. Beal? Yes. Mrs. Glad? Mrs. Glad? Mr. Raymond? Yes. Mrs. Kalich? Yes. Mrs. Bortz? Yes. Mr. Lamon? Yes. Mr. Stavik? Yes. Eight days. I'd like to put in the form of a motion C2, award successful bidders for online teachers, which is Exhibit C. Question on the motion? Roll call. Mrs. D'Andrea? Yes. Mrs. Beal? Yes. Mrs. Bortz? Yes. Mr. Lamon? Yes. Mrs. Kalich? Yes. Mrs. Glad? Mrs. 
Mr. Raymond? Yes. Mr. Stefik? Um, yes. Eight yes. And lastly, which is informational C3, the many mighty Mustangs will once again hold various family literacy activities for the 2019-2020 school year. Please visit the www.lhsd.org for more information and complete list. That concludes my report. Thank you, uh, Mr. DeAndrea. Buildings and Grounds Committee, uh, Mrs. Sports. Yes, this is informational approved inspection proposal for the stadium lights and base. Do we have a motion on that? No, we don't need a motion. We need a motion. Because of the yes, Yeah, it should be an action item. Yeah, okay. I'll make a form of a motion. Second. Question on the motion. All those in favor? Those opposed, motion carries. Uh, do you have any information? Sure. Um, on, on the light inspection itself or in general? Okay. Um, for the stadium based light inspections, what that includes is every two years we're required, it's mandated that we have the base of our stadium lights inspected and the light poles themselves inspected. What this does is maintain a level of safety and security, um, not only for those that are attending, uh, but those that are working on those apparatuses throughout the two-year period. That's what um, that last motion was for. In regards to other endeavors in the district, we're in the process of starting the commissioning of the middle school air conditioner and boiling boiler process. That should be up and running, I'm assuming, if everything goes smoothly towards the end of next week. Park roof project was officially completed, I believe, last Friday. So that is a project that we have done and it is completed. We've been following that very closely from beginning to end. I think we have a pretty good project there. We're still maintaining grass cutting throughout the district. Um, as you know, it has been relatively hot here toward the end part of September. Looking at the weather, we do not anticipate breaking that into next week, but we will continue. <coughs> Modern situation and do what we can to keep everybody cool. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you Mr. Sports. <clears throat> Finance Budget Taxation Committee, uh, Mr. Raymond. Uh, yes, the Bank Reconciliation Board summary report is on the table. Uh, I'd like the board to consider a motion to approve motion. payment of the bills found in the exhibit now. I'll make a motion. Second. Question on the motion. Uh, roll call. Mrs. Sports. Mrs. Glenn? Yeah. Mr. Raymond? Yeah. Mr. Lehman? Yes. Mrs. Kalich? Yes. Mrs. D'Andrea? Yes. Mrs. Beal? Yeah. Mr. Seven? Yes. Eight yes. I'd like the board to consider a motion for the payment of the GOB bills found in Exhibit G. Make a motion. Second. Have a second. Roll call, please. Committee, uh, Mr. 
Matt, you want to do that, or would you like Mrs. Kayla to do it? Thank you. FS 1A, I'd like to put in the form of a motion. The cafeteria report and exhibit L. Second. Question on the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. FS 2 is informational summary update of the summer food program. That's in exhibit M. FS 3, informational. Free and reduced lunch applications are able to be completed and submitted digitally by visiting the Laurel Highland School District website and by clicking on the cafeteria tab and then to the online lunch application tab. You can go also to the www.paschoolmails.com and complete the application or you can complete the application from the school cafeteria app. Paper copies of the application are available in all school offices of the district. Just a reminder, it is never too late to fill out the lunch application if your income needs change. Please keep in mind that you can never lose free and reduce lunch benefits once you obtain them for the school year. That ends my report, Mr. Sebek. Thank you, Mrs. Cambridge. Transportation Security Committee, uh, Mrs. Beal? Yes. Um, 1A, approved contract proposal for security guards for 219 to 222, exhibit M. This is for both armed and unarmed guards for training. For Act 67. Do we have a second on that? A second. Question on the motion, roll call. Mrs. Beal? Yes. Mrs. DeAndrea? Yes. Mrs. Glad? Mrs. Glad? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Lamon? Yes. Mr. Raymond? Yes. Mrs. Kalich? Yes. Mrs. Boards? Yes. Mr. Suffolk? Yes. Eight yes. Uh, 3A, approval for Jim Pierce and Paul Powell to attend mandatory training November the 4th and 8th, 219 in Brownsville, PA at a cost of $4.95 per car. A bar. This is mandated by PPE as a part of Act 67. Um, all of our security is going to have to take this course. Uh, do you want to talk about it? Um, it is something that's new that was just adopted uh, this summer, signed into law by the governor in July. It became effective at the end of August. And essentially what it does is um, restate the um, requirements of school security guards as well as school police officers, requiring them to not only have the clearances that they already have and the approval that they have of those who are carrying weapons, but also to go through this training as required by the, by the Act. Um, this is an additional training beyond um, what they already have, and it allows for the training to take place anywhere up to February 20th, 2020. In addition, it does somewhat limit the um, school police officers to only be permitted to now um, issue summary citations, and um, it's going to probably involve the uh, state police a little bit more as far as having to be called on situations beyond summary citation situations where our school officials, our school security staff and school police will be able to investigate and detain, but then involve state police both in uh, misdemeanor or above offenses as well as uh, serious juvenile offenses. So that's what the act requires. So um, that's what is necessary for this training. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Frank. So we have to vote on that. I'd like to second that motion. Uh, roll call, please. Mrs. Beal? Yes. Mrs. DeAndrea? Yes. Mrs. Sports? Yes. Mrs. Glad? <coughs> Mrs. Kalich? Yes. Mr. Lamon? Yes. Mr. Raymond? Yes. Mr. Suffolk? Yes. Eight yes. <coughs> that concludes your report, Mrs. Uh, Beal. Human Resources Committee, uh, Mrs. Scavage. Personnel and Labor Relations, um, Professional Personnel, E1A, I'd like to put the form of a motion, approve staff listing for the 2019-2020 school year on an Exhibit O. I'd like to put that in the form of a motion. Second. Second. Question on the motion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those approved. Opposed? Motion carries.
P2A, approve additional substitute teachers, exhibit P, A, regular certified substitutes, and B, emergency certified substitutes. I'd like to put that into a form of a motion. Second. Question on the motion? Roll call. Mrs. Kalich? Yes. Mr. Raymond? Yes. Mrs. Black? Yes. Yeah. Mrs. Beal? Yeah. Mrs. Bortz? Yes. Mrs. D'Andrea? Yes. Mr. Lamman? Yes. Mr. Suffolk? Yes. Eight yes. P3, request for retirement and other leaves resignations. A, informational professional employee A will be on leave for the 2019-2020 school year using accumulated sick days. And B's informational professional employee B will be on leave for the 2019-2020 school year using accumulated sick days. P4A, approve permission for the following individuals to be placed as long-term subs in the positions indicated in Exhibit Q. I'd like to put that into a form of a motion. Second. Question on the motion. Roll call. Mrs. Kalich? Yes. Mr. Raymond? Yes. Mrs. Bortz? Yes. Mr. Lamman? Yes. Mrs. Beal? Yes. Mrs. Glad? Yes. Mrs. D'Andrea? Yes. Mr. Suffolk? Yes. Eight yes. P6A, approve tenure for teachers, Ms. Michelle Jackson and Master Sergeant Daniel Sarone. I'd like to put that into a form of a motion. Second. Question on the motion. All those in favor? Those opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Congratulations to those two on tenure again. P7A, approve Jacqueline Zyloff for the middle school learning support teacher as a first year teacher for the collective bargaining agreement effective August 13, 2019. I'd like to put that into a form of a motion. Second. Question on the motion. Roll call. Mrs. Kalich? Yes. Mr. Raymond? Yes. Mrs. Glad? Mr. Lamman? I want to pass. Mrs. Beal? Yes. Mrs. Bortz? I'll pass. Mrs. D'Andrea? Pass. Mr. Suffolk? Yes. 5-3, motion carries. P-8A, approved permission for LBI networking administrative intern. Our man is a for 150 hours to be completed by January of 2020. I'd like to put that into a form of a motion. Second. Question on the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Aye. Motion carries. P-9A, approved permission for student interns as needed for Moore Highlands National Academic Foundation programs to perform no more than a total of 160 hours of internship hours each term at minimum wage, $7.25 per hour for a total of $1,160 each term. The student interns are receiving hands-on learning experiences which assist in preparing them for future careers. I'd like to put that into a form of a motion. Second. Question on the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Support personnel, P10A, approved additional substitute employees for support personnel found in Exhibit P. I'd like to put that into a form of a motion. Second. Question on the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. P11A, approved Gina Miller for the five and a half hour cafeteria helper at the high school for terms of the collective um, bargaining agreement. I'd like to put that into a form of a motion. Second. Question on the motion. Roll call. Mrs. Kalich? Yes. Mr. Raymond? Yes. Mrs. Beal? Yes. Mrs. Glad? Yes. Mrs. Bortz? Yes. Mrs. D'Andrea? Yes. Mr. Lehman? Yes. Mr. Suffolk? Yes. Eight yes. P12A, paraprofessional update found in Exhibit R. I'd like to put that into a form of a motion. Second. Question on the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Those Aye. opposed? Motion carries. And that ends my report, Mr. Suffolk. Thank you, Mrs. Kalich. Athletic extracurricular activities, uh, Mr. Lehman? Thank you, Mr. Subject. Good evening, everyone. Thank you all for coming. I trust the school year has been going well for you so far, and we look forward to seeing you at the next meeting. Under the Athletic and Extracurricular Activities Committee, uh, under A and E 1A, award bids for the winter sports, that is Exhibit S. And the winter sports are basketball, boys and girls basketball, freshman basketball, and varsity swim. The total for the high school is $10,821. Middle school boys, basketball and volleyball, the 
total middle school is $1,638.87. Items not bid on, $149. So the total of the winter sports the upcoming year is $12,610.62. I'd like to put in a motion at this time. Question on the motion. Roll call. Mr. Lamon? Yes. Mrs. Beal? Yeah. Mrs. Glad? Yeah. Mr. Raymond? Mrs. Kalich? Yes. Mrs. Bortz? Yes. Mrs. D'Andrea? Yes. Mr. Suffolk? Yes. Seven yeas, one nay. Under the ADQA, permission to advertise and solicit bids for spring sports. I'd like to put that in form of a motion at this time. Perfect. Question on the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Under A and E3A, Permission to approve the coaches and volunteer coaches, that's Exhibit T. For the assistant 7th and 8th grade boys soccer coach, that would be Luke Price. For the assistant 7th and 8th grade football coach, that would be Nick Grab. For the assistant varsity boys and girls uh, cross country coach, that's Kenny Rydell. And the assistant 7th and 8th grade boys and girls swimming coach, that's Jen Pryor. Uh, before I put that in form of motion, Dr. Wallace, along with the volunteer coaches, Golfs, James Joyce, volleyball, Jason Taylor, and seventh grade football, William Martin. All of these uh, applicants have their clearances. Yes, sir. Thank you. I'd like to put that in the motion at this time. Okay. Question on the motion. Roll call. Mr. Lehman? Yes. Mrs. Beal? Yes. Mr. Raymond? Abstain. Mrs. Kalich? Yes. Mrs. DeAndrea? Yes. Mrs. Glad? Yes. Mrs. Bortz? Yes. Mr. Seven? Yes. Seven days, one abstention. Under A and E, four A, approved bidders for the positions that will be posted for the extracurricular school service organizations, clubs, and miscellaneous positions. That's Exhibit U. And for the senior high positions, uh, Spanish club, ski club, environmental quiz team, environmental club, yearbook production, yearbook business, newspaper production, newspaper printing. And the district position miscellaneous building level technology coach for Clark Elementary and homebound coordinator for semester only. I'd like to put that in the motion at this time. Okay. Question on the motion. Roll call. Mr. Lehman? Yes. Mrs. Beal? Yes. Mrs. Bortz? Yes. Mrs. D'Andrea? Yes. Mrs. Glad? Yes. Mrs. Kalich? Yes. Mr. Raymond? Yes. Mr. Suffolk? Yes. Eight days. Under A and E 5A, group impressed by Dr. Gregory Hogan, Uniontown Chiropractor Center, to become a volunteer medical assistant to teams for the Royal Highlands High School Varsity Program. I'd like to put that in the form of a motion at this time if I could. Question on the motion. Roll call. Mr. Lehman? Yes. Mrs. Beal? Yes. Mrs. Glad? Yes. Mr. Raymond? Yes. Mrs. Kalich? Yes. Mrs. D'Andrea? Yes. Mrs. Bortz? Yes. Mr. Savick? Uh, yes. Eight days. Motion carries. Under A and E 6A, further request by Mr. Robert Costello, the head cross country coach here at Water Island, support an elementary cross country meet, third, fourth, and fifth graders on October the 7th, 2019, with a rain date the following day, October the 8th. This said no cost to the district and would begin at 5 p.m. at the high school. I'd like to put that in the form of a motion at this time. Perfect. Question on the motion. Uh, all those in favor? Those opposed? Motion carried. Under A, E, 7, A, approved request by Mr. Patrick Livingston, the head varsity softball coach, for the softball team to attend spring training in Disney, Orlando, Florida, March 18th to the 22nd, 2020. This is at no cost to the district. And I might add, I think we all have our package for the softball trip. It's pretty detailed, pretty informative, and I think they uh, crossed their T's and dotted their I's, so I'm going to put this in the form of a motion at this time. Second. Question on the motion. Roll call. Mr. Lehman? Yes. Mrs. Beal? Yes. Mrs. Glad? Yes. Mr. Raymond? Yes. Mrs. Kalich? Yes. Mrs. Bortz? Yes. Mrs. D'Andrea? Yes. Mr. Suffolk? Yes. Seven yes, one pass. The last item on your A and E would be 8A. Accept the resignation of Mr. Eric Johnson, the assistant middle school football coach, effective immediately, authorize the superintendent to place Nick Grab in this position to end the outcome of the posting. I'd like to put that in a motion at this time. Second. Question on the motion. Roll call. 
Mr. Lamon? Yes. Mrs. Beal? Yes. Mrs. Glad? Yes. Mr. Raymond? Abstain. Mrs. Kalich? Yes. Mrs. Bortz? Yes. Mrs. D'Andrea? Yes. Mr. Seppick? Yes. Seven yeas, one abstention. Mr. Seppick, thank you, Mr. Johnson, for his time as a chair. We appreciate him being there and helping our students as much as he could. Thank you, Dr. Wallace and Mr. Seppick. That concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Legal advisement, Mr. Frankhauser. Under grievances, um, we have the, the uh, grievances that are at the administration level, board level, and arbitration level, which we are dealing with. I will keep the board posted on those matters appropriately and hopefully for prompt resolution of all those matters. Under the uh, solicitor's report, uh, we've already heard about the CTI uh, refinancing of one, which should be a financial benefit not only to the CTI but all of the sending districts. We look forward to that happening in the not too distant future according to the effects of the market. And uh, that's the extent of my report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Frank Hauser. Let's go to the addendum. Dr. Walsh, you want to read those? Sure. Um, first thing, um, I would like the board um, as an informational item and an action item, well, mostly informational. The October work session and board meeting will be changed to October the 22nd. The work session will be at 5 p.m. in the regular place, which is the board conference room. And the voting session will be here at 7 p.m. in the high school auditorium. And we will be advertising that very shortly. On the addendum side, I'd like the board to consider a motion to accept the re resignation of Mr. Dwayne. Mr. Wayne D'Angelo, security guard at Hutchison Elementary School at the beginning of the 2019-2020 school year. Mr. D'Angelo had one year of service with the district. Motion. Second. Motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Those, Aye. those opposed? Aye. Motion carries. I would like the board to consider a motion to accept the regret and retirement of Mr. John Valesco, ten and a half month custodian at the high school. Effective November the 27th, 2019, Mr. Valesco has had 24 years of service with the district. Thank you, Mr. Valesco, for your 24 years. We appreciate it. We have a motion and second. I'll make a motion. Second. Question on the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Aye. Motion carries. I would like the board to consider a motion to approve permission to hire Ms. Casey DeCenzo the head varsity boys girls swimming coach for the 2019-2020 school year. Second. Question on the motion. Roll call. Mr. Lehman? Yes. Mr. Raymond? Yes. Mrs. Kalich? Yes. Mrs. Glad? Yes. Mrs. D'Andrea? Yes. Mrs. Bortz? Yes. Mrs. Beal? Yes. Mr. Suffolk? Yes. Eight yes. Motion carries. I'd like the board to consider a motion to approve the request on support staff employee C for an unpaid leave of absence and status quo health benefits through January 31st, 2020. Okay. Question on the motion. Roll call. Mrs. Bortz? Yes. Mrs. Beal? Yes. Mrs. Glad? Yes. Mr. Raymond? Yes. Mrs. Kalich? Yes. Mr. Lamon? Yes. Mrs. D'Andrea? Yes. Mr. Seppes. Yes. Eight days. That concludes the agenda, Mr. Seppes. Thank Seppes. you. Career and Technical Institute report, uh, Mr. Raymond? Uh, nothing to report at this time. Mr. Frank Hauser will be a plaintiff. Just that the meeting will be changed to the uh, 30th as opposed to the 23rd. Thank you, Mr. Frank Hauser. We have a report from the intermediate meeting. Uh, under other business, uh, do we have any public comment? Please come to the mic. Give us your name, the uh, item you'd like to speak on. Uh, hi, my name is Mark Howard. I own two businesses in Union Town, uh, Lebanon Avenue Car Wash, and Abishé Bikes Business, which I opened last year. And the reason for my comments tonight are I do services to the district. Very fortunate, thankful to uh, have 
been able to do events. I do the senior high football games. I do the one on senior uh, for the senior high football games at the LH Major Football. Um, they asked me to do soccer for the tournament last Saturday, and I've done some fun days and some other events at some of the elementary. I do Marshall School, uh, LH Middle School, and a couple of other schools that have me here for shaved ice. Maybe the tomorrow is how I'm coming. Naturally, I'm there for the senior high football game. And with the spirit, the community spirit program for the game, last year one of the schools had Cone Ice, which is a shaved ice company from Morgantown, as their fundraiser for this event. When I approached the person about that, you know, I just asked them, like, you know, it's a little bit upsetting being a business owner and a taxpayer of South Union Township, which I also previously had a store, a store of Patton's BB's Market I had for 16 years, which is another business I paid that, you know, paid taxes for, and was, you know, a contributor to, to, to the taxes. And I just asked me, I just thought it was a little upsetting that they would invite or have someone from Morgantown come to a local event, knowing that I sell the Laurel Hawkins football games and the LH boosters receive a percentage of you know, our sales. And with that being said, I had I had gotten a phone call yesterday that I haven't been married again tomorrow. Now, me as a business person and a local business person and a taxpayer, it's a little bit upsetting. Mm -hmm. I mean, last year was fine. Okay, I get it. To have them come back again this year, knowing that I sell the football games. I, I don't, I just, it's a little bit upsetting for me. Anytime, that when I have my store in Hawkwood, for 16 years I bought a full page ad in the basketball program. I dealt with Barry Ross, I, I worked with Barry when we worked together for Lance, uh, Lance Incorporated. Anytime I was ever approached to sponsor or do something, if I could, I did. And I would do it, still do the same. But like I said, I mean, I, I know that they use Cone at their school, you know, at their schools, and, and that's fine. I mean, what? You know, everybody has their, you know, what they do. And I understand that PTO principals or whoever is in charge, that's their decisions, and I have no problem with that. It's just this particular event. I thought it was a little, it was a little upsetting to me that they would have them come from Morgantown to do an event in Uniontown. That I'm already doing, you know, for the school. And thank you for your time. And I just want to bring that to your attention. At the end of the meeting, could you stick um, around? Sure. And, and give me your contact information. Sure. I have business I, I need a little bit more information. Though. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll be glad to tell you what I can here. Just to clarify a little bit. Yes. Um, the Spirit Day is put on by our academic foundation. Okay. It's it, it's a separate entity from the school district. Okay. However, ultimately, you're right. Everything falls into the auspice of our control. And um, I just need to know a little bit more sure. about the situation. And I'll just stick around and I'll talk Absolutely. to you. It's, me and my wife were actually the first people to bring shaved ice to Fayette County. Mm -hmm. We had a cart. We actually would do Barry for the basketball program. But Barry Rogers was still involved with that. And we had actually had a cart. that when I sold my business in Poplar, we bought a trailer last year. But uh, Kathy Glenn, I have business cars for everybody. I, I have a question. Do yes. you have two trucks or just one? Just one. Just the one. If you want to buy, if you want to buy me another one, I'll be glad to take it. But no, I, I have one. I totally understand about the academic foundation because I was one of the people who initiated that years ago. But anyway, we really don't have a lot of control, but we are going to try to correct this problem. I understand. And like I said, I, I could, could you I, have moved your truck from the, the the top where the auditorium is and move it down to the field? Here's the thing. Could you have done yeah. that? Here's a, yeah, here's a note. I actually have to come up on Friday afternoons to back that truck in. And then I get home or whatever and come back in the evening. So I'm actually making two trips. It, it's just not doable for me to do that tomorrow. Yeah, you, could, yeah, you couldn't do that. No, okay. It, 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 so we, but I'll be glad to tell you the percentages I give in this and that. And, and, we know you do a great uh, job of contributing to back to the school. We understand that. And I appreciate it. I mean, I'm, I'm very thankful for the, the schools. I mean, you know, we'll thank you for, but we'll try to okay, okay, appreciate that. that. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Howard. Uh, Mark, thank you for coming out. Stick around because we do want to talk to you. Okay.
first. Yeah, Mark, that's the first time that I've heard about this incident from tomorrow, I think, as well as a couple of the school board members. So, yeah, stick around and we'll talk about it after. It's the first time I've heard about it. Absolutely. I'm not here to make any problems. It's just a little bit upsetting. Correct. I Thank understand. You. I totally understand. Okay. okay. Thank you. Chuck Michael, 31 Heritage Hills Road. Um, over the last week, there has been talk on social media of a consolidation. I heard it at the work session that was brought up, but it was not put on the agenda tonight. Um, I know that, you know, this is public comment, so I'm not going to ask questions. I'm just going to say a few things. There are a lot of us in the district that are for consolidation, but for it in the right way. Um, I've been through it myself. I am an, I'm currently an administrator in Connorsville. And I went through that process, I went through the whole thing, and we just feel that if there is going to be a consolidation, if we're going to have these talks, if we're going to look at what's best for our kids, there needs to be good, some good communication, there needs to be a good plan out there. You have a lot of community people that would be part of that plan, a lot of administrators, a lot of business people, a lot of teachers that would, you know, sit on committees, help you in any way possible. Uh, I'm tonight offering my help. If you ever want to ask me to be on any kind of committee, anything, I will be part of that. Um, I have two children, one in fourth grade, one in second grade, both go to Hatfield. I live in Heritage Hills. I've been here for seven years, and I'm just really committed to this community. I'm committed to sending my kids to Laurel Highlands. I think there is a lot of us that are committed to that, and if we can help in any way possible, we would like to do so. Thank you for your service. I know that being on the school board, being an administrator, is not easy. Thank you for what you do for our kids. Thank you. We, 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 we intend to do it the, the uh, right way. You just don't do this overnight. We understand that I've been involved in this uh, closing schools, opening schools, uh, building schools. So I totally understand. And uh, I've had 60 years of experience and involved in this. So. Uh, I totally understand, and we are going to do it the correct way. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Hi, I'm Leanne Beatty. Um, I live at 41 Lee Street. Um, I've never done this before, so excuse me. I don't know what the protocol and everything is. I'm just, I heard that the um, decision was made for the fifth graders to not do the overnight for the outdoor school. And I'm wondering if that's true, and if so, why? <laughs> well, there was nothing, or there was a board vote that did not pinpoint fifth graders. <coughs> the board vote was any um, grade below eight would not be allowed to go to overnight trips. It's not just fifth grade, it's encompassing all of those grades. Okay, can you and tell me why? The intention to hide that was grounded in safety issues. Um, there was a, a action of the board that felt very strongly that our students wouldn't be as safe as they could be in some of those positions where they were going overnight and as a result of that the board opted to do away with overnight trips for anything under eight grade. But that's something that these kids have been doing for generations like their parents did this. I mean, isn't this great? Isn't the funds for it raised by, by the classes that do the overnights? Park Could more were, security be? Park were, and also the district contributed to that account also. To, not the tune of, I think, roughly about $20,000 a year at, at the district. But the money wasn't the issue. Uh, I think I, what I heard in the conversations that the board gave to me as superintendent had more to do with safety issues than it did as monetary issues. I heard that it had to do with transgender children and people being uncomfortable with them being allowed to stay with the children, their gender of choice. And there were a lot of those rumors going around. It's not a rumor. I, fact, I know for a fact. No, the rumors <laughs> that it was founded in that were going around. Are the However, minutes for that can meeting I available? Ma'am, ma'am, yes. ask me a question. Let me finish. As soon sure. as I finish my answer, ask me another one. But to pinpoint the transgender issue, that issue was accommodated by the district and the, pro and the program. That was never an issue for us. It was taken care of and it was remedied. Next uh, question. It was, well, that was actually a ramification of them being forced to let that happen. 
and somebody actually told a parent that that's, well, next year it probably just won't happen. Okay, well, I don't know who told the parent that. It wasn't myself or I'm not aware of any board member that told are the Are the minutes available for the board meeting where these decisions were made? Yes, ma'am, they are. All right, thank you. Anybody else? Hello, good evening. My name is Steve Perkins. I live at 1170 West End Boulevard. I would like to also speak to the board about outdoor school. I have a son who is in fifth grade this year. He desperately wants to go to outdoor school like his sister did earlier in the year. They're only about 18 months apart. So, my understanding is that I'm not from this area originally, but the kids have been going up on the mountain for close to 48 years now, which I think is quite a tradition. Um, I don't know a lot of schools that have a tradition that, uh, that's held in there, I guess, that long. Um, you know, me not being from the area, I hear people talk, and they all, they're my age, they're in their late 30s, early 40s. And they actually talk about going up on the mountain in outdoors for Laurel Highlands. Um, you know, I guess you know, the cancellation of the overnight stay. I mean, we keep talking about safety issues. You know, for a while I heard it was a money issue. Um, if it is legitimately a safety issue, are these safety issues that we can look at and try to solve? I work in a fairly dangerous industry. I guess most people would consider oil and gas to be a dangerous industry. We look at safety issues all the time and find ethical solutions to those problems. Is this something that the board would reconsider? You know, we can reconsider uh, any issue, but at this point in time, it's, this is the first time it's been brought back up. So uh, right now we'll have to consider it. Okay. But I, I understand times are different. Okay, when I was a when I first started teaching, students brought guns to school. They used to have them on their racks. They used to go hunting after uh, after class. You can't do things like that anymore. And to make it totally safe for every every child, we're trying to do that. So there was a safety issue, and uh, that's why the board decided to uh, go that route. The children aren't going to, other than sleeping over there, there's no change in the program. That's all, that's the only change, that they're not going to be sleeping up there yeah. overnight. But the rest of the program is still going to be uh, uh, adhered to. Yeah, and I think it was kind of an overnight stay, essentially, it's what kind of pushed it over the top, essentially. You know, it was that get away from mom and dad, all my friends. And, you know, it really made a big difference. It was a big impact. I mean, it really was. It's left an incredible impact on my daughter. So, I mean, that's, um, I mean, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. I mean, that's what I'm interested in. And I'd really like to see the program reinstated. Thanks for your time, sir. Thank Appreciate you. it. Okay. All right, Kevin. I have a motion to adjourn. Uh, Mr. Oh, Zephyr. Go ahead. So, based off comment. Um, I would actually like to make a motion to approve Dr. Wallace to form a committee for consolidation that would involve people um, from other districts, um, stakeholders. However, he would like to build that and be able to present that back to the board. Um, I think that's a, a great idea and a great start. Is there a second? Yes. Although I understand the, the right way to do this is to get a commission together and uh, but we need to we need Well, I, I don't think there's any harm in well, making that motion. That's why I made it. No. I think that we should. Yeah, I appreciate it. At least allow Dr. Wallace to form a committee, just like this gentleman said. Um, <laughs> We have a motion to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries.